So, in, in the last part, we're going to look at um, ancestral state reconstruction, ancestral state reconstruction of individual characters, as in climatic characters, and then combining these together for ancestral niche reconstruction. So, as I explained um, previously, the concept of ancestral state reconstruction on, on a phylogeny is well established and widely used, particularly for these sort of binary characteristics where we've got a um, uh, DNA base, for example, and we can use the Parsimony principle mm -hmm. as an example to minimize the character state changes across the phylogeny to suggest that T is the most um, optimal ancestral state for this node, because anything other than a T would infer more character state changes. As we could do this with um, these sorts of, um, uh, it's the opposite of continuous, um, discontinuous, discontinuous characters. Very good. Um, we can we can do this with sort of continuous characteristics such as environmental variables. Um, so, if we treated, say, these numbers at our terminal nodes as um, um, discontinuous characters, we'd have 2, 1, 1, then our ancestral state here would be 1. If we treat these as continuous characters, discrete is the word I was after. Um, if we treat these as continuous characters, we can, we can use a sort of Brownian motion model of character state change that sort of slides along, <coughs> a, a slides along so that we reconstruct not the same values but some intermediate value based on a uh, minimization of change along the branches. Okay? So, both the discrete method and the continuous method are constrained by the observed range of characters. What that means is we can't, in this case, we can, can't reconstruct a 3 here because we can only <coughs> put in the characters that we've seen in the terminal space. The equivalent case for the continuous character reconstruction is that we're limited for the reconstruction between the range of the observed values in the terminal nodes. So we cannot reconstruct a 3 here. We can only reconstruct somewhere between 1 and 2. Okay? It's a point that this kind of smooth line reconstruction, which is used for continuous character state reconstruction, it might miss some real hard boundaries. We can imagine, for example, frost tolerance as a real sort of hard boundary. And perhaps this species has a frost well, this species has a frost tolerance and these don't. Okay? But this continuous reconstruction sort of morphs one into the other and there's at some point where this transition happens where you know the, the minimum temperature is below zero. And that requires some biologically very different um, uh, characteristics in order to, to deal with those. Um, but we're constrained, if we're using contact, uh, continuous reconstruction, to basically morph along as we go. So continuous character state reconstruction essentially just minimizes the distance between adjacent nodes in the phylogeny using uh, um, one of uh, several different methods. Okay? Um, it essentially assumes a, a sort of continuous character change across the, li across the line that um, typically would use something like squared change parsimony where we're minimizing the square of the difference between one node and the next node. You can implement this using um, R's package 8 
Um, and there's three different methodologies. Maximum one to get least squares or general one to least squares. Other packages run the same sorts of analyses. Okay, so we're going to try this ancestral state reconstruction using a really simple example of just three terminal modes where the values here are the observed values of temperature or precipitation or something. Okay, and again, it's just a simple, um, actually, two line analysis because we need uh, to read the tree in. We need a data set that specifies the values at the ends of the nodes. And we need the ancestral state reconstruction. Here is just plotting. So here's an example of a sort of a larger phylogeny where the colours represent, I can't remember what they represent, I think this is precipitation, some value of precipitation where the redder, the red purple colours represent higher values and the green colours represent lower values. So we've got our uh, more um, drought tolerant species in one clade and the um, more, I don't know, hydrophilic, called that, species, rain loving species in another clade. Okay, so that's an ancestral state reconstruction. So the next stage is can we combine these into ancestral niche reconstruction? So, a Biopin model is a niche model, okay? And it's defined by the minimum and maximum values of the species. So here are three points. We read off the temperature. This point is 17 degrees, this point is 16 and a half, this point is 15 and a half, okay? So, we can then specify what areas are within the range of 15 and a half and 17 degrees, and that might give us an area on the map that says this is within the the temperature range. Okay? So, it's a very simple model. It just says what's the minimum and the maximum values that, uh, uh, that define the temperature limits. Okay? So, the idea being if we can reconstruct each of those individual variables on our phylogeny, okay, we can overlap them and create a proper Bioplin model. Okay? So the Bioplin model essentially overlaps the uh, suitable area for temperature with the suitable area for precipitation. Okay? And here's the overlap, and this is the area that's suitable for this species. Okay? If we as I was saying yesterday, if we choose many, many different um, environmental layers, each layer may constrain more and more, and we end up with overfitting. Mm -hmm. And then when we try and project that into past climates, our overfit model ends up selecting no areas. Uh, so just this is the example that I showed the other day, okay, about what, what sort of um, biological questions we can answer, or at least support hypothesis for. Here we've got Drosera stenopetala, its model shows New Zealand. Drosera uniflora, its model suggests um, Patagonia, it's a simple area. This is where it's found, this is where it's found. Okay? We can read from our um, phylogeny that these two are sister species. And we can read from the dated phylogeny how old the ancestral, common ancestor was. Okay. So the question we want to ask is what was the ancestral area for these two species? Okay. We look at the temperatures, we look at the age, we reconstruct the ancestral niche based on the temperature preference. So here the temperature preference is uh, 7.3, 7.1, our ancestral temperature preference is 9.8. Okay. We read off the age, we project our reconstructed model into a paleoclimate reconstruction. And if everything works nicely, we get an area that selects, uh, this is the ancestral area for these two species. Okay. And it turns out that in this case, 
it selects New Zealand. Okay? It's not just picking one model over the other, okay? because, the, the, for example, the temperature preference is 7, 7, but 9. But the, the 9 still selects the climate that's reconstructed for that particular time period. Okay, so we're now going to try a very simple version of that model using R. Okay. 